Hello friends, today's video is going to be all about salvation. Uh, what does it take? What does it mean? Why do we need it? How do we get it? And so on. So in order to answer these questions, we need to do something that's called right division. And right division is simply keeping God's word in context. Knowing the who, the what, the where, the why, the how. These types of questions, okay, when we study the scripture. Now, <clears throat> right division is also putting our faith in what God says over what man's religion tells us it says. Okay, there's a huge difference between these two. One is truth and the other is speculation. Stick to God's truth, folks. Now, you know, that's why I tell people to search out the scripture for themselves okay don't believe necessarily what other people say not even what I say instead do the research yourself let God speak to you through his word and I tell people you know to be like the Bereans were look at what God's uh, word says about the Bereans in Acts 17 verse 10 through 11 and the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessal Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched out the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So this is how we have to be. We need to search out scripture, okay, to see if what we're being told is indeed the truth. Now, to add to right division, okay, right division is the only way to study God's Word. And we read that in 2 Timothy 2.15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, in order to understand salvation, you have to understand four points, okay? And the first, the first point is is what God says in his word that we're all born sinners not one person is born without the stain of sin that's handed down all the way back from the fall of Adam and Eve okay look at Ecclesiastes 720 for there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not in Romans 310 as it is written there is none righteous no not one in Romans 3 23 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God in Psalms 51 5 behold I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me again in Psalms 58 3 the wicked are estranged from the womb they go astray as soon as they are born speaking lies now the second point is that all sin leads to death and because we're born with sin we're all spiritually dead from birth now take a look at Romans 5 12 wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned in Romans 6 23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord now the third point uh, we need to look at is that after we die we all face God's judgment okay and we either go to heaven or we end up in hell there's only two places folks in Revelation 20 11, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever was not found in the written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire in Hebrews 9 27 as it is appointed unto men 
once to die, but after this, the judgment. Romans 14, 12. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Now the fourth point is that not one person can earn or work their way into heaven by doing good, by, by good works, and so on. Okay, Salvation is only by faith. Faith alone in Jesus Christ, who he is and what he did, his gospel. Okay, Romans 4, 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. In Galatians 2.16, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. In Galatians 3.11, But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. In Ephesians 2.4, But God, who is rich in his mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. In 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In Titus 3.5 Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Now, we see certain words connected with salvation okay in fact there are nine specific words we see in scripture in relation to our salvation and the first word we're going to look at is propitiation jesus christ is the propitiation for our sins okay romans 325 whom god has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God in 1 John 2 2 and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world in 1 John 4 10 herein is love not that we loved God but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins now the second word is substitution Jesus was made sin for us on the cross in 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now the third word is regeneration. In Titus 3.5, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. The fourth word is sanctification. In 1 Thessalonians 5.23, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians 1.30, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. In 1 Peter 1, 2, Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Now the fifth word is justification. We are justified by faith. In Romans 4, 25, Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification? In Romans 5, 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the sixth word is imputation. 
Romans 4 8 blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin the seventh word is reconciliation 2 Corinthians 5 18 and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us we pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to God the eighth is redemption we are redeemed by the blood Ephesians 1 7 in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his glory in Colossians 1 14 in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins now the ninth and final is glorification Romans 8 17 and if children then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if so be that we suffer with him that we may be also glorified together see the lost are spiritually dead all right they're enemies of God alienated from God and their master is Satan the devil in Romans 5 10 for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life in Ephesians 4 18 having the understanding darkened <clears throat> being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart in Luke 19 10 for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost in Ephesians 2 2 wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world according to the prince and power of the air the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in that in the lust of the flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others in John 8:44, ye are of your father the devil and the lust of your father ye will do he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in truth because there is no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it okay so sin entered the world when Adam and Eve disobeyed God they ate of the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and when they did this they became spiritually dead okay and then that led to physical death like I said earlier even since Adam man has been born with a sinful nature which leads to death in Genesis 2 17 but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die now the benefits of salvation is forgiveness of sins eternal life and the promise of being with God in heaven forever in Colossians 1 12 through 14 giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins now at the very moment we get saved we're baptized into the Holy Spirit and we receive the Holy Spirit we're sealed for eternity at that point okay our flesh will continue to experience its struggle in this world until we pass on until our flesh is changed at the rapture and we see Galatians 5 16 this I say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another so that ye cannot do the things that ye would also when we're saved we're made a child of God and at that very moment we're added to the body of Christ we became members of the body which Jesus will gather unto himself at the rapture of the church we're made fellow heirs we're made sons of God not servants we're made sons of God okay in Galatians 3 26 for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus Ephesians 2 19 now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God now in conclusion the gospel is this 
In 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, Paul writes, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that Jesus Christ was the sacrifice for our sins. He died on the cross, and he took our sins with him into death. Okay, He buried our sins with him. And three days later, he rose from the grave alive in the flesh in full victory over death and in full righteousness. And and that righteousness now covers you, okay? His righteousness completely surrounds us in God's eyes. We're seen in the righteousness of his son. He no longer sees our sins, but all sin is gone forever. All past sins, all present sins, and all future sins are now seen as righteous in God's eyes the righteousness of his son. We're made completely justified by our Lord's shed blood. Look here with me at Romans 5, 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the from wrath through him. So what it boils down to is admit that you're a sinner sincerely, then believe and trust in Christ Jesus, who he is and what he did for you on the cross. And at that point, God knows if you're sincere or not. And if you are, you're sealed into the body of Christ for eternity, okay? It's really that simple. So thanks for watching this with me, my friend, and peace and grace in, uh, in Christ Jesus be unto you and yours, and I'll see you on my next video.